Alright, let's talk about this little device here. Someone gave it to me uh, quite a while ago, saying like, ah, I don't need it, like, you could just have it. And uh, once I decided to actually cook some meat, this is digital meat thermometer, hey? And when I tried to use it, it didn't work. When I opened the battery compartment, I realized something. Well, there is no battery anymore. I realized ba the battery was all leaking uh, all over the place. So. I dropped it off and just didn't bother anymore. But today I decided to take a look. If this thing is fixable, fix it. If it's not fixable, ditch it. Okay, so what we have here, we have a unit. It's actually supposed to measure power. Sorry, it's supposed to measure temperature of meat. And there is a probe. Curious, so we're gonna take a look what's inside this thing and figure out what kind of thermoresistor, thermocouple it is. Um, so let's touch it. Oh my god, did, did this thing even leaked all over here? I'm not sure if this connector is still kind of working. Um, yeah, it has... Pro oh, I'm gonna probably see a lot of goop or a lot of corrosion in here. Goop probably not anymore. Goop all dried up and corroded anything it can along the way. Yeah, this is uh, another victim of battery, alkaline battery being like leaking. So now I took my, um, um, I swore that I, I, I never gonna leave any alkaline battery long term uh, in any kind of product. Always like my flashlights when I, for example, not use them over the season, I always pull batteries out. Oh, oh I see, interesting. Oh, interesting. Okay, I think I'm gonna see. I thought I'm gonna saw see a bit worse than going than I see just right now, but it's uh, it's not too crazy. Well, speaker wires uh, wires are obviously super dinky right here. Many 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 screws, tiny screws. Maybe I can use this screwdriver. I need something smaller than that. Um, is this, is it the switch over here? And get it. How does it work? Uh huh. I see. That's probably a very crude way of making this switch. Nah, can't do this. Maybe this is gonna help. Probably too small. Okay, talk you. I removed a bajillion of screws over here, and we are in. Just try to pull this battery thingies if they are pullable. They are. Ta da! That's a nice uh, LCD screen over here. Very up memory down. Yeah, just look at the contact. It just didn't bother. They use those uh, whatever little teeny tiny copper wires insulated. Looks like we have a. Oh, I thought this inductor, but there's a three wires. That's probably inductor. It is inductor, but three wires. Yeah, that's cool. Ah, weird. Anyways, um, it looks like the piezo buzzer over here, and this inductor, some sort of um, uh, wire together with it. So it's it's, it's connected. I'm I'm wondering why. There is a uh, sort of. Resonator over here, but there is no value. I'm gonna just really eh, Whatever No, it's not whatever Yeah, that's not what I wanted to do, but okay Really glued down very well I don't even know if it has any oh, okay here we are no values on it, sucks. Anyways, if you really wanted to, I can just probe it with my oscilloscope to see. Uh, not much going on here, I must say, not much. Looks like this, uh, whatever it is, this inductor e kind of looking thing. Not capacitor, yeah, it's not electrolytic capacitor. I really hard to, like, three wire inductor, <laughs> possibly, inductor connected straight to the battery or sorry to the positive or negative battery so it's ground I guess it's uh, this positive 
Yes, it is. No, this is actually positive, right? Yes, it is positive. And that's it. Yeah, totally not much going on here. So I'm wondering, there's not much damage happening. So I'm wondering why this thing is not kicking in. It's not working. And let me put this, try to put this thing back at least somewhat. See if it's gonna work. And when I connect a battery, just, yeah, just like crudely put it in. Okay, I'm gonna take this, this one. There's a click. Hmm. I don't think it needs this, but just in case. No click anymore. Interesting. Curious what could have happened to it because it's very, very basic construction here, so it just it should just work. Very nice screen, actually, I like it. A zebra strip and things like that. Yeah, whatever. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just take a look closer, closer on this. All right, let's look a bit up close in this uh, unit over here. So, not much really going on here. I'm sure um, there's not really much to talk to. But so the main thing we have this blob, uh, which is probably responsible for all possible functions. So running those, reading those buttons, buzzing, uh, buzzer on that side, reading the temperature sensor or the, the thermocouple kind of values, um, processing those switches and uh, running LCD, whatever. Everything is on this uh, blob. Uh, obviously, who knows what the blob does. So let's trace the thermocouple, probably the most interesting thing for me. Okay, thermocouple goes in here, uh, then there is a resistor over here, there's another resistor, capacitor, and it runs in. This trace goes straight to chip, and this trace goes straight to chip. So yeah, not much going on here, there's no external amplification of any sort, so it's just straight connecting to the chip. So maybe this chip is purposely built for this task. So this transistor and resistor seems like it's a part of amplification circuit for the buzzer because it goes directly to this, I presume, inductor, which is connected to buzzers. Very, very simple. Not really much going on here. There is no backlight of any sort. Yeah, it's, it's only a single-sided load. There is a few jumper links on the other side. And, uh, sorry, it's a double-sided load, but single-sided PCB. And, yeah, that's it. It's very, very crude. I'm gonna clean up those battery contacts, put it together. If it's not working, it's going to garbage. The uh, thermocouple, on the other hand, I would like to actually measure the voltage um, um, or millivoltage. So when ch temperature is gonna change over here, um, some if it's thermocouple, this has to generate some voltage over here. And I have capable multimeter. I hope it's gonna catch those values. I believe you or not, this thing alive. So, happens I just put it all back together, plop this sort of Alka uh, rechargeable from IKEA, whatever, and it just poked the on button, it just works. Interesting. The, obviously, the temperature reading here is like a shitty, but it still works. Look at this. So we're just holding the thermocouple and I, I assume it's gonna increase the temperature. It's like a current, te yeah. It's like all over the shop. Okay, 
28, yeah, it's, it's going up. 29, really, 29? Skin temperature, 29? Yeah, 30, wow. Hmm, okay. Alrighty, it's whatever. Uh, but it clearly works because you can pick different poultry, veal, ground beef. Oh my god. You can increase, I guess, temperature, prepare. Well, cool. I mean, this thing is smarter than me while well, cooking meat, looks like. Pork, done. Pork just done. Cannot be medium. User, user settings, I guess. You can do, it doesn't work. Yeah. I don't know what buttons do. Anyways, I don't care about figuring out how this thing actually works. I care if it operates or not. Looks like this device is working and what we still have left to do is actually measure the voltage on this thermocouple to see what kind of values we are talking about here. Okay, uh, let's shut this little dude down and grab a multimeter. So, okay, we have our setup. So I use this crocodile connectors in order to uh, have a good grip on the um, on this uh, contact over here. Also, I cleaned up the contact because it was kind of full of oxidation of some sort. Right, let's take a look. We have millivolt range in this multimeter and see what we're gonna measure here if we measure zero. Just surprising. Let me warm this thing up. Maybe it's not thermocouple, maybe it's thermoresistor. Nothing, all right. Uh, Okay. Yeah, it is thermal resistor. But look at the resistors changes. I see. Yeah. Okay. So I was wrong. This is thermal resistor. Probably NTC uh, type thermal resistor. Forty-seven kilo ohm at twenty-two C. Okay, well, still not bad. Still not bad. Okay, that's uh, we'll figure it out this thermo this is that this is thermoresistor, not thermocouple. Why I thought this is thermocouple because usually they are. This is like look look this is very nicely shielded, and thermocouple has to be sh like if it's long wire like that has to be shielded just because it would uh, a uh, the the lot of interference is going to be uh, externally and value gonna be screwed big times but th in this case uh, maybe I was wrong about 47 kilo ohm look at this value is all over the shop unless it's just a contact here or something right I will play with this uh, uh, some other time but we clearly have thermal resistor here which is um, and because this has to be like some serious temperature thermal resistor because it's gonna be inserted in oven I'm not sure um, how um, was the value this thing can withstand can we assume it can stand 200 C uh, I don't know mm, but potentially yeah yeah clearly thermal resistor that's good all right well good we figured out this is thermal resistor it's good to know uh, maybe i can use it for some other projects who knows uh, it's good to have a thermal resistor i just need to know characteristic of this thing Me measure the resistance at a different temperature uh, but it could be kind of dog job to actually characterize the thermal resistor without knowing what exactly is in here um, so yeah it's yeah and i'm obviously not gonna just try to yank it out of here potentially i can try to do that but not sure if it's uh, worth doing just to maybe read out the value but some thermal resistor is so tiny and small that you cannot it just yeah, you have to know what it is. Um, yeah, okay, I think it's it. Uh, I think we successfully sort of revived this little dinky thing and figured out that this is not thermocouple but thermoresistor. I'm not sure if we're gonna use it or not. I didn't really cook that 
often the meat but hey i hope it was useful for you be useful for you because now you know how this uh, devices work and what's inside and if you have something like that uh and you're curious what's how it works yay just watch my video you're gonna know it all right uh thank you guys for watching see you next time next time we're gonna disassemble the free no uh i don't know mm, i don't know I'll, I'll figure out something <laughs>